So today we are going to be talking about the best possible attachments that you can put on your M4A1. So this is going to be piggybacking off of my MP5 video that I posted last week about how some of the barrels are actually misleading and they do actually hurt your damage range, even if they don't state it. So this is definitely the most optimized M4 class setup that you could surely use on your M4A1. So for the muzzle, I'm rocking the monolithic suppressor. This one's going to give us that damage range and sound suppression combo. So this is a really great two for one, especially if you like to stay stealthy and you don't want your weapon showing on the enemy compass when you're firing your weapon. This is a really great option. And that damage range boost that you do get is also really nice. All right, so moving on to the barrel. So this is going to be the most important portion of this video. So first, let's go over my recommendation. So if you're playing multiplayer, you should definitely use the Corvus Custom Marksman Barrel. So this one's actually going to give you about 30% damage range increase in most multiplayer matches. Most of your engagements are going to be from that 20 to 30 meter range anyway. So that's why having the Corvus Custom Marksman Barrel is actually the better choice for multiplayer because it gives you the least amount of cons as far as aim down sight speed and movement speed. Now, I know there's going to be people arguing saying the M16 Grenadier is actually better, but it's almost actually identical to the Corvus Custom Marksman Barrel as far as damage range goes. Now, the only thing that is different is that it actually has more of a penalty for aim down sight speed and movement speed. Now, in multiplayer, it's more fast paced, a lot more close quarter combat type of situations, and you don't want to be at that kind of disadvantage when you're using the Grenadier. So that's why you should go with the Corvus Custom Marksman because it does give you the same amount of damage range with less cons to it. Anyways, back to the focus of the barrel attachments here for example check out the commando barrel as well as the tack light and the predator they all have one thing in common and that is that con of bullet velocity so as you can see here it doesn't explicitly state in every single description that it actually affects your damage range again shout out to exclusive ace he was actually the one who found this hidden information and the conclusion was that all of the attachments that do have that bullet velocity con with it actually does negatively affect your damage range for the most part if you're you're really trying to maximize the type of attachments that you do use on the m4 definitely go for the ones that do increase your bullet velocity because that will help you melt your enemies a lot faster especially from longer ranges all right so moving on to the stock i do recommend using the no stock attachment just to balance out this class setup a little bit because this one will give you the pros of movement speed as well as aim down sight speed now for the next attachments we are using the stippled grip tape this one's going to help out again with aim down sight speed as well as your spin to fire speed so that you can pull up your weapon a lot faster after coming from a sprint now for the final attachment i'm using the 50 round magazine the 50 round magazine is efficient enough for multiplayer and you don't really feel that penalty of aim down sight speed and movement speed as well with the 50 round magazines versus the 60 round mags and that's mainly why i chose the 50 round magazine because multiplayer is more about fast paced type of gameplay all right so now we're going to transition into the second half of the video where i use this exact same class setup and i'm going to be breaking down my every move and providing some tips and tricks that will help you improve as a player so if you do want to see more videos like this make sure to leave a like it shows me that this is the kind of content you want to see make sure to subscribe if you're new around here to make your way back to the channel so you can see more class setup and breakdown videos like this and join turbo nation today man i'd really appreciate it if you guys would join turbo nation thank you so much for 100,000 subscribers it really does mean a lot to me the support on the channel is absolutely amazing and i can't thank you guys enough for it so i'll see you guys in the next portion of the video peace all right so here we are we're playing on candor hideout actually one of my favorite maps in the game because it's a traditional three lane map and it complements my play style perfectly which is flanking and staying stealthy so you'll see here in a minute what i mean by that but as you can see here i push here on the left side in the garage now before i approach this door i'm actually gonna peek it really quickly because i want to get a good sense and see what is around me first before i push because remember this is the beginning of the match and the enemies do spawn in from the opposite side of the map so so it only makes sense that they might actually be here head glitched or here in the corner which you do see those footsteps right there because i'm using that tracker perk and i actually let my teammate go first instead of actually pushing out there and challenging whoever's here in the corner so as you can see he does get taken out and i pretty much just clean up the mess there is somebody else here which i did not know about and that was unfortunate there and that's exactly why you don't really want to play too aggressive when you're pushing on that end of the map at least in the beginning of the match what i'm going to be doing for the rest of the match is pretty much just flanking and sticking to the outskirts of the map pretty much like what i do in almost every video that i post here's another thing that i do want you guys to consider when i talk about three lane maps so right now let's just call this lane lane number one the middle will be lane number two and the far end of the map is going to be lane number three 
Most of my teammates are in lane number two in the middle of the map. So that means that there's a higher probability that I'm going to come up against some enemies in lane number one. So as you can see here, I come across one enemy. I do take him out. A big reason why I win those gunfights is because I'm always pre-aiming around every corner because of how surprisingly fast enemies can come up out of nowhere. So here I just make the connection. I just kind of clean up the whole situation there where my teammate died. So now at this portion of the map, all of my teammates are in lane number one with me. So that must mean that the enemies must be in lane number two or lane number three. So what I want to do right away is I want to flank and rotate accordingly so that I can get easier kills because those enemies most likely are going to be preoccupied with engaging in gunfights with my teammates. As I make my way around the map, I am going to be pre-aiming around every corner, just as I said. Here, I'm actually just letting the situation unfold. I'm paying attention to what is going on in the game. I'm being patient and I'm waiting for things to happen. As you can see, I do come up on an enemy right there, which enables me to earn my UAV. So that way we have a lot more information to work with as we're moving around the map. So there is an enemy shooting at my teammate. I do make that connection and I was able to take him out thanks to the way that this M4 is built. And by the way, another reason why I'm pre-aiming so much is because of the way that this M4 is built. It's not built for max aim down sight speed and movement speed. So you have to take those into consideration when you're using certain setups is pay attention to how they should be used. So in this situation, I hear these footsteps behind me and my teammates engaging in a gunfight. These guys were actually trying to go for a flank. And it turns out there actually was more than one enemy here. So I thought really quick in that situation and I threw my C4 to be able to weaken the enemy and possibly make me do a lot less in that situation so that I can make it easier for myself. So now I'm on a pretty good streak. I just earned my white phosphorus, but I'm not going to call it in yet. Now, the reason why I don't call it in yet is because I do want to call in my advanced UAV first, because if you know anything about the white phosphorus, it makes it absolutely harder to see on the map, especially for the enemies, as well as weaken your enemies. So when you call in that advanced UAV first, you do have the advantage because you see exactly where the enemies are on the mini map. Anyways, the reason why I decided to retreat into here is because I'm only two kills away from my advanced UAV. So at this point, I'm only playing for my streaks. I'm just going to let the enemies come to me. And at the same time, I don't know if you guys noticed, the enemies also did call in a VTOL. So, of course, I'm going to try to stay alive as long as I possibly can. Stay on my streak. So, there are some enemy gunfire outside. I don't know if you missed that or not. But if we replay it right here and you pay attention to my teammate... Watch how his triangle just disappears. So that is a prompt that there is an enemy nearby. And here he is right here. So he appears very quickly out of the corner. So at this moment, all I have to do now is just a drop shot to avoid dying. And as you can see, he almost did catch me. And doing that drop shot maneuver definitely saved my life. And you should definitely learn how to drop shot if you don't know how to yet. So the reason why I'm pausing it here is because I do want to briefly explain what I mean by rotating around the map accordingly. And I felt that this is a good learning lesson since we have the whole entire map here. So as I was saying, this is lane one, lane two, and lane three. So if you're looking at the mini map and you're seeing a bunch of your teammates on the same side of the map as you, that's a guarantee that there's going to be enemies on the opposite side. So this only proves that it's true. Another thing that I did want to address was the fact that I have seen some comments saying, why are you teaching people how to spawn camp, etc., etc." Well, it's because number one, I'm a solo player, so I don't have the luxury of teammates doing callouts telling me where I can and cannot go. And number two, how many times have we come across enemies who are sitting in random corners of the map that you never knew existed? So the only way for for me to be able to regulate that and minimize the amount of randomness is to actually control the enemies and keep them at bay in their spawn. So I'm essentially gatekeeping the enemies from moving forward past their spawn. And the fact that I can actually do this as a single player alone just goes to show how effective this strategy is. So by doing that, I minimize the amount of randomness that happens. I do not want them crossing this point right here. That's why you see me anchoring some parts of the map and rotating to the other side where I anchor here, or I'm gonna anchor here, keep an eye on those lines of sight where the enemies might be spawning in from. So back to the video, I am gonna be calling in the white phosphorus. So this will essentially weaken the opponents as well as obstruct their vision, which should make it easier for me to kill them. So at this point on in the video, 
video it's pretty self-explanatory i'm just gonna follow where those red dots and red triangles lead to so that i can get the easy kills but at the same time i don't want to just go out there blindly because i do want to remain on my streak as long as i possibly can as you can see we're on a ruthless and unfortunately here i messed up on my slide i thought he was actually going to continue going around that corner and that's why he was able to turn around he probably heard my footsteps as well and that's why he was able to kill me so another interesting thing about this gameplay is that my team was actually down by big and i'm actually carrying my team right now i'm trying to help them out to victory you're gonna see me play a little bit more aggressive here in a little bit because i do want to win this game for my team so basically i'm gonna be doing everything faster just sticking to the outskirts of the map and as you can see my senses are heightened as i shoot at my teammate unknowingly and i do take out that guy that was standing up there in the window so what i'm gonna do now is i'm looking to push forward now i do see this guy right here and i wasn't sure if he saw me because he's got that ghillie suit on it was really hard to tell now my first instinct again like i said you want to fill in those lanes correctly make sure you're not bunching up with your teammates i've said this a lot in previous videos so as you can see i'm gonna make my way to lane one because there are no teammates there occupying that which means that i'm most likely gonna come across easy kills or come across stragglers that's why i'm pre-aiming into every line of sight and areas where i could possibly get shot in from here comes a straggler right there i take him out and now i'm gonna kind of play two sides of the map right here i'm playing both the first lane and as well as the second lane because i do see that there's an opponent right here and i'm going to use this dumpster to my advantage to be able to get a good clear shot so i'm going to take him out and as you can see i did end up behind here which makes for a really good head glitch which covers most of my body giving me a good advantage in that situation now i did also notice there was another enemy coming at me so that's why i decided to retreat and i'm going to back up a little bit and pre-aim to get the easy kill sometimes you have to notice what is going on around you and in certain situations you are going to have to retreat and just let the enemy come to you instead so as you can see i'm still rotating around the map i'm still sticking to the outskirts it's pretty much the same exact strategy i'm looking at the scoreboard now we're only down by one and i do notice some enemy gunfire coming in from lane number one so i'm gonna go ahead and hop up here for a good head glitch i'm gonna take him out unfortunately he did get my teammate i'm gonna try to push into the garage area i'm gonna pre-aim and as you can see here there are some enemy gunfire going on over here as well as the compass that's why i immediately come into this area to see if i can actually take out all three of these guys because again this is a very close game right now and i do want to win all right so here i am i'm going to approach the middle of the map lane number two there are a bunch of enemies out here and i was able to take out two now i'm going to keep rotating around this area because i know that this is exactly where the enemies are at i mean look at where my teammates are on the minimap right now i'm here all alone by myself so that's why i'm on high alert right now and i do know that there is somebody actually behind this wall because i did see him hide behind that wall all right so i'm going to throw my c4 to be able to weaken him i'm going to jump around this corner and take him out for the easy kill so now that i see we're only one kill away I do manage to come up on an enemy right here for the victory, man. That was a super clutch win by us. We were literally losing the whole entire match, and we did make a great comeback there. And we made some great plays. We stuck to the outskirts. We rotated around the map accordingly. And hopefully after my explanation of how to rotate around the map accordingly and notice the signs of when to actually rotate and fill in those lanes correctly, I hope that actually did help you out. So uh, we finished off with 29 kills and 5 deaths. I really hope you guys did learn something from this video. And if you did, make sure to leave a like so I know to keep posting content like this. And subscribe if you're new around here. Join Turbo Nation today. We've officially hit 100,000 subscribers. I cannot thank you guys enough for the support. I really appreciate it. It really does mean a lot to me, the support you guys show on the channel every time I upload. You guys are absolutely amazing. And I will see you guys in the next video. Have a great day. Oh, what's going on, guys? If you guys are interested in watching me play live, my Twitch is in the description down below. Make sure to hit that follow button and I hope to see you there. Peace.